Is it okay for me to ask questions of a passage of scripture that I'm trying to study? Well, that's a good question. I'm Brian Catherman, and this is SaltyBeliever.com, and, and I'm talking about a Bible study tool called the Bombarding Question Tool. Should I be asking questions of the text? And, and I'm going to say absolutely yes. It helps you to become a better uh, student of the Word. It helps you to observe better. And I think the text can handle it. In fact, I think the text kind of encourages it sometimes. If we're to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, then we're going to need to really dig in and ask some questions and then work to see if we can find the answers to those questions. So as you're reading, I would encourage, put a piece of paper right there, or have a notepad or something. And as you're going, and as those questions come up, don't, don't suppress them. Kind of play that out and follow whatever it is you might be asking and, and see if that might help you become a better, uh, more astute student of the Bible as you're observing what's happening. So the tool is called the Bombarding Questions tool because what we're doing is we're just asking a ton of questions. We need to remember that we might not be able to find answers for all of our questions, and there might not even be answers for some of our questions. We also need to know, though, that the Bible contains a lot of information that will answer many of our questions. And sometimes we might need to turn to commentaries and some other help. Just remembering those, those scholars who wrote commentaries are seeking to answer questions, but it's not uh, as authoritative as the Scripture itself. So if you can find your answer in Scripture, you're usually better off. But it's okay ask questions and then seek the answers. So as you're reading, put a little piece of note paper there and, and as those questions pop up in your mind, jot them down and then come back to them and seek to answer them. I have a huge list of questions that I like to ask when I'm studying the Bible and then different passages of scripture will, will, will bring up different questions. But here's basically some, some kind of every time I'm reading type questions that I like to ask. I always like to start with how is the passage organized and and what kind of writing is it? Is this poetry, narrative? Is this discourse? How did the author organize it? What should I be looking for? How should I see that? What, what kind of writing am I dealing with? Um, I love to ask, why is this particular passage of scripture here in this place? Why, why did God see fit to put it in this particular book of the Bible, in this timeline of the Bible? What's here? Um, I have a huge list. Uh, what is the historical situation going on in the text that the text is talking about, and also what's the historical situation that was going on when the audience and the author um, first read and wrote this book. So like remember, Moses was writing to the people in the Exodus about what happened in Genesis. Okay, so, so there's a pretty big time gap between those two historical situations. It's helpful to just ask, what's going on and, and how is that helpful? How does this passage that I'm reading contribute to the larger field of systematic theology? I, lo I, I love that question. And, and some of these good scholars help answer that question. How does this passage that I'm reading help contribute to biblical theology, and how should I see it in that field of study? How is this text connected to the gospel? Oh, that's a critical one. You should always be asking that. What is the human author attempting to say to me? What message is here? Sometimes it's kind of under the surface, what is the big communication that author is trying to say? And how is the author trying to say it? And why is the human author trying to say this? I mean, and why is God, the other author, the, the overarching supreme author of the Bible, saying this? Why does this matter? I've, I've read stuff and go, why, why is this important? Why does this matter? Why is this contained in Scripture? What's, what's going on here? What would change if what I just read were not in the Bible? You know, what's at stake? How would theology change? Um, who are the people involved? You know, it's simple. Who are the characters if it's a narrative? Who are the audience if it's, you know, discourse being written to another uh, group of people? Who is the author and what's going on with the author? What is this that I'm reading as far as how it is being communicated in that way? Uh, what's taking place physically here? What, what's physically going on? What's spiritually going on? Where does this thing that I'm reading fit in the biblical timeline? Like, where are we at in the story? Uh, what do the words mean? And if you run across a word, you're like, I, what is that? Write that down. Go ahead and take a jaunt into a word study. How else has this same biblical author used that word? Uh, you can use like a Strong's Concordance, or if you have Bible study tools, or, you know, original languages. There's ways you can kind of search that out. How does the whole Bible use this word? 
What, what does this word mean? What, the, the meaning of the word change over time. Is there words or, or is there ideas that are repeated? Is there something going on that's repeated? And if so, why? What is being emphasized? Is, is there a certain tone in what I'm reading? Why this tone? Why this way? What, what am I thinking here? Is, is this person mad? Is this person happy? What's going on? These are just questions that you could be asking. Um, is there something being contrasted? Why is this being contrasted with that? Is there something shocking? I'm feeling like this is shocking. Is this supposed to be shocking? I'm going to write that down. I feel surprised by this. Was this supposed to surprise the reader or is it just me? I'm going to write that down. Um, is this a command or is this a promise? Or, or what is this communicating from God and in, 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 in what way? And then as you're going, and there's lots more questions that are just general questions, but as you're going, ask specific questions of the text. One of the guys I'm teaching with says, you know, why does the snake or serpent talk? Is it a snake? Is it a serpent? Does that matter? Um, why did God intervene with a miracle here? Is this what we would have expected to see or not expected to see? Why was this guy uh, only wearing a linen cloth that the Roman guards got and he ran away naked? And why did that even get included in this particular book? And, and here's one that's really fun. Why, when Peter was denying Jesus, does the author mention that it was a charcoal fire? And then again, later when Peter's being restored and Jesus is making you know, the, the fish and Peter's there, is it again a charcoal fire? Why this kind of fire? Why that kind of fire? Sometimes... You know what? You're not going to find answers and it's not going to be important. It's just an interesting detail. What's a broom tree and what's happening here? And sometimes, you know, there's going to be all kinds of stuff that get unlocked because you're chasing down answers to your questions. I know there are many preachers and, and many commentators who will just fill a page with questions before they move on from just the reading and rereading process and start working on additional material. I do the same thing. I set a time and I just sit work through a text and ask all the possible questions I can think of. I try to exhaust my mind of every question. And then I look at that. Some of them I can, pretty simple. Is this clearly poetry or whatever? Some of them not so simple. Some of them not very important. Some of them very important. And so as we learn to be better about observing what we see in the text, we need to bombard that text with questions. And then I would add this. Before you start the process, during the process, and even after the process, be in prayer. Ask God to help you with good questions. God, what questions should I be asking? And then as you're asking and answering those questions, God, help me find the answers to these questions. And then as you've learned and grown, thank God for the question and then the answer. That's how we walk through good Bible study. So I want to not only invite you, but encourage you as you're reading, you know, don't, don't just pass over stuff. Ask good questions. It might be a very important question. You don't know. Explore, but don't hesitate to just, just bombard the text you're studying with as many questions as you can think of.